Alright YouTubers, how you diddling? This is The Disposalist and in this video I'm going to talk about how to shoot in Battlefield 1. Now you'd think that's a pretty fundamental thing, everyone knows how to do that, but there's a lot of underlying mechanics and properties of the weapons that alter how these things work, as with most parts of the game. And I think having an understanding of all of that stuff will improve your performance. So I'm going to use footage, I'm in an empty server, but I'm going to use real footage to show you as I go what I'm talking about. And the first thing to talk about is sway. Now what we're talking about when we say sway, uh, you can actually see in the animation of the soldier's arm here and the gun he's holding. That gun is bobbing about because he's not a robot, he moves uh, and he breathes, and so he can't hold his aim perfectly. Now the animation there, uh, when I'm hip firing, seems pretty quick. If I aim down the sights, you can see the sway, the effect on the aim of sway quite clearly. And if you sit and watch the little dot from this lens ladder reticle, you'll see it moves in an M and then followed by a W, kind of an extended figure 8, uh, as the soldier breathes and tries to hold his weapon. Now this is a scout, so everybody else, you have no control over that sway, and you can see that that's uh, 50, no, that's 25 meters, this pillar, and you can see that sway is going up and down a couple of inches, maybe across four inches or so, at something like 60 meters, I think that was that pillar there, it's uh, something like six inches high, maybe, the sway, and nearly a foot across, but if I look over in the distance, at the top of that mountain, that's 250 meters away, no, nearly 300 meters away, and that sway is something like a meter or more high and a couple of meters across, maybe even more than that. So that's the effect that sway has on your aim. Now a scout, he can take aim and then press the run key to hold his breath, and you may have heard an intake of breath that the scout took. Let's do that again, and you can see the crosshairs become rock steady. Now if I keep holding my breath for the scout, immediately after he runs out of breath the sway is about double the speed and then it goes back to your normal sway. So the scout has some control over his breath, you can quickly hold your breath, take a shot, let your breath go and your sway doesn't go to double speed but you have to be quick, hold your breath, take aim, fire, let your breath go and the sway resumes without running out of breath and that sway doubling. But as I say, everyone gets sway, only the scouts can control it. And the next thing to talk about is accuracy or spread. The underlying terminology tends to be spread. That tends to be what people say on the forums. It's a little bit misleading when you're talking about weapons like the scouts single shot rifles because spread isn't very descriptive of inaccuracy. More with a submachine gun where your aim does spread away from and the bullets do spread away from your original aiming point. Scout rifles aren't the best things to show this with because they have zero spread. When I hold my breath and take aim, I hit exactly where I was aiming. There is no deviation. So I'm going to redeploy with another class. So I am redeployed as an assault class. And I'm using the optical MP18 because you can see better when I zoom in with the optical lens there. You can see better the effects of accuracy that I'm talking about. So the spread we're going to see, as I said, is a bit of an odd term. It works for the submachine guns because your aim really does spread away from your original aiming point. As you can see when I fire, it starts and becomes quite wild as those bullets carry on. So that's spread in action and why it's called spread, I believe. But spread takes account uh, of inaccuracies of the weapon and it happens on every single bullet, including the first and with every single weapon, apart from those scout rifles, as I showed you. So even the first bullet, you can see, doesn't go exactly where I aim. See, that one went to the right quite wildly. That one went just a bit high. That one went to the right again. That one went down and left. So there's spread inaccuracy to every single bullet fired. Now the next thing I'm going to talk about is recoil. Now this is a more natural thing to understand, I think. When you fire a gun, especially like a submachine gun, it bucks in your hand. It moves because of the explosive action of the bullets in the chamber. Your weapon actually moves in your hands 
that's called recoil and the effect it has is of course to move your aim it literally moves the crosshairs away from what you're looking at now the most visible effect of recoil is the vertical recoil and indeed this is treated differently in the game there are two separate separate statistics for vertical and horizontal recoil and uh, vertical recoil is always upwards it's just naturally the way things happen and if I just take aim and fire and don't counter that recoil, which we'll talk about in a sec, ah, and quickly reload, you'll see that the aim rises up and gets to a maximum where it won't go any further, but it's a long way off the original aim you had. And that is your vertical recoil. For a submachine gun, it's very pronounced. I have to move my mouse, move my aim to counter that at the same speed that the recoil is pushing it up in order to keep on target. Now, you can see that bullets were still spraying to the left and the right, and part of that is the natural inaccuracy of the weapon, the spread. But the other part of that is there is a horizontal component to recoil, so when you fire, it randomly will move to the left and to the right um, with recoil's effect as well as spread. So that's somewhat interchangeable, a little difficult to extract from one another. So following on from spread and recoil is the concept of spread and recoil recovery or decrease. Now this underlying statistic is the rate at which a weapon recovers from the effects of spread, inaccuracy, and recoil. Now I'm going to demonstrate this by firing this shove machine gun one shot at a time and you'll see as I explained spread means it doesn't hit the target but it's reasonably repeatable how accurate it is. But as I get faster, just reload, as I get faster, you'll see it becomes less and less predictable. And if indeed I hold my finger down and go fully automatic, you can noticeably see that the spread actually gets worse and worse until it reaches a maximum where those bullets are going either side of that column. Um, and my accuracy was much better when I was taking one shot at a time and would have been much better if I was taking short bursts. Now the reason for this is the rate of recovery of spread and of recoil was being exceeded by the rate of fire of the weapon. So if I fire at a slow enough rate that it recovers from the inaccuracy of the weapon and from the recoil of the weapon before I take my next shot, then it is easier to keep that weapon on target. I hope that makes sense. So from that demonstration and description of the underlying accuracy, spread, recoil and recovery of those two statistics, you can see that rate of fire isn't always a good raw statistic to have. If the rate of fire of your weapon exceeds the weight rate at which it recovers from its inaccuracy and its recoil, then you're going to very quickly get um, off your target. And you can see that even with this MP18, the rate of fire exceeds its ability to recover its aim and you are very quickly struggling to hold that recoil yourself. But of course, you cannot compensate for random left and right recoil. You can somewhat compensate for the vertical recoil, but even that, the jumps in which it recoils vertically are random, the sizes, so you can't totally compensate for the randomness of the recoil, and you certainly can't compensate for the randomness of the spread of the innate inaccuracy of the weapon itself. There are exceptions to this rule, of course, and I've redeployed as a support player to show you how LMGs work with spread and recovery. The same statistics are underlying, but these operate in a slightly different way, in that their spread increase is negative. When you begin firing, they start with a high spread, and that spread actually gets better over time, over the first few bullets. So you can see they start with a high spread, but then the bullets become concentrated on the target. They start quite high and then get more accurate. This is easier to see with hip firing in a way, and if you keep an eye on those crosshairs, you can see that the crosshairs actually indicate the accuracy of the weapon and the spread change. So when I begin firing, the crosshairs spread, 
and then over the next few bullets the crosshairs become tighter LMG is terrible with the hip fire. This LMG is terrible with the hip fire, so you can see it was missing that colour most of the time anyway. But that is negative increase in spread, and that's special to light machine guns. Something else that's special to light machine guns and to submachine guns is they also have a first shot multiplier for spread. And what this means is that the very first shot you take is worse than all of the rest. So you have an initial buck of the weapon and then it's easier to control with both the recoil and with the spread there's a first shot multiplier but once you've had that first shot you then have it under control and the accuracy gets better a good example of rate of fire overcoming the weapon's ability to recover from spread and recoil is with medic rifles. Now these are self-loading rifles, they're not fully automatic but they're self-loading, they can be fired quite quickly. Um, and if I show you, if I take my time and allow the gun to settle between shots then my aim can be reasonably easily maintained. The rec recoil and the uh, spread recover between each shot but if I fire it quickly you can see that both the recoil I'm having to actually counteract the vertical recoil with my mouse but I can't counteract horizontal recoil you can see the aim actually moving the spread is also increasing you can see even if I compensate for the recoil with my aim that the spread makes the shots wider and wider as I fire in quick succession. This is because the rate of fire that I'm using is exceeding the weapon's recovery from recoil and spread. So one slight exception to the spread mechanic are shotguns. Well they do follow the underlying spread mechanic, they do have those uh, properties, but they have an additional mechanic called dispersion and this is because they fire a shell with multiple pellets within it and those pellets as soon as they leave the muzzle of the shotgun fly out in a cone shape and disperse the further away they go from the point of your aim. So whilst your aim is definitely important because that's the central point of that cone of dispersion the amount of dispersion from the shotgun is also very important for the amount of damage you do and how effective your aim is. And you can see I fired at this pillar earlier and you can see the spread. That's a single shot, or well, that's two shots there. You can see the spread of the pellets from that single shot. Um, this sweeper variant has a duckbill choke, so they've actually spread out horizontally more than they do vertically. Most shotguns have equally spread vertical and horizontal pellets. So you can see that although obviously my initial aim is important, the center point of that cone of spread, the amount that it spreads uh, and how fast it spreads is also very important for a shotgun. So you have to bear that in mind when talking about accuracy. The next thing I want to talk about is bullet velocity, muzzle velocity, which is the velocity of the bullet as it leaves the muzzle of your weapon. So if I aim at that ledge on that uh, mount there, 250 meters or 300 meters or so away, you can see I have to aim pretty high in order to get it. The reason for that is because it's taking a couple of seconds for my low velocity submachine gun round to reach that ledge, and in those couple of seconds, gravity has an effect. So there's a distinct arc to the path of the bullet in those couple of seconds while gravity pulls it to the earth. Now a higher velocity round would have simply take less time to reach the ledge and need you to take into account the effects of gravity less. The secondary effect, tank just pulling out behind me, the secondary effect of low bullet velocity is that you will have need to lead your targets more and by lead your targets what I mean is you'll have to anticipate their movements so if you have someone running across in front of you if there was someone running across at the base of that mountain there and I wanted to shoot them I would have to take account of the fact that my bullets taking a second or so to reach them and so I'm having to fire a second ahead of them I'm having to fire where they will be when my bullet reaches them and obviously the more you have to do that the more that changes in your target's movements will make that impossible. 
just quickly redeploying with a scout sniper rifle here much higher velocity than the submachine gun I was just using aiming at that same ledge you can see the bullet drop is considerably less the round is hitting that ledge much quicker because it's faster so gravity has less time to take effect with the SMG I was having to aim up here to hit it if I do that with this rifle I'm going way over so less velocity is much higher bullet drop having to lead your targets the last few things I'm going to talk about I'm going to bunch together and I'm going to talk about the effects of standing crouching or going prone on your aim also of moving or not moving and the first thing to talk about was a bit of a revelation to me when I started doing the research for this but when you're aiming down the sights as you see on screen now there is no difference to crouching or going prone on your accuracy when you're aiming down the sights doesn't matter if you're crouching or prone or standing the accuracy is the same it's a good benefit no matter what if you move your accuracy gets worse when you're aiming down the sights not radically so except with some classes the scout rifles of course are perfect aim when you are aiming down the sights but if you move your aim becomes as bad as some other classes when they're hip firing something to bear in mind on the whole most classes aiming down the sights is radically better than hip firing moving when you aim down the sights is worse but not as bad as hip firing even with some trench variants the hip firing even when you're lying prone and stationary the hip firing is still worse than when you're moving and aiming down the sights of course that's not to say that hip firing is always worse accuracy wise it pretty much always is but situationally hip firing is often the best way to go your target acquisition and your situational awareness is much better in close quarters combat and some guns trench variants and some guns in general are pretty good at hip firing regardless of the accuracy issues so how about a quick summary of everything you have to think about when you shoot in Battlefield 1. First up is sway. All guns do it. Scouts can mitigate it by holding their breath, but if they run out of breath, that sway gets worse. Accuracy or spread is something that we all have to deal with. Scouts zoomed in have perfect accuracy. All other guns will have some innate accuracy to cope with and this in effect limits your range of engagement if you can't rely upon the spread of your weapon then you might have to get closer and that varies of course between classes and between different weapons that spread will increase with every shot you fire and there's a time to settle between shots so if you fire rapidly or if you're indeed using a submachine gun on full auto then that spread will get worse and worse until it reaches a maximum the exception to that rule is a light machine gun which gets better and better till it reaches a minimum all guns have recoil this can be totally mitigated by a bipod but on the whole you're going to be coping with the recoil of your guns the vertical recoil you can generally compensate by moving down if I rapid fire this gun I'm also moving my aim down in order to stop it from rising into the air if I didn't mitigate it will move up and up with the vertical recoil horizontal recoil you cannot mitigate for there's nothing you can do it's random to the left or to the right you just have to rest between shots if you wish that not to compound and get worse rate of fire as we mentioned earlier has the benefit of throwing bullets out faster and doing more damage but at the expense of compounding inaccuracies and recoil and bullet velocity you have to think of if my target is a long way away and my round is slow speed I may have to lead that target aim ahead of where I think they're going to move or I may even have to compensate for the drop of the bullet for gravity's effect over time one thing I may not have mentioned earlier is the damage drop-off effect of range on pretty much all weapons. You can see those damage drop-off charts in the customization screen for every weapon. It's an intentional game mechanic to limit the effective range of weapons. Basically, at a certain range, your weapon bullet will do less damage than it would at its ideal and up to its ideal range. And finally, I spoke about the effect of standing, crouching, going prone, moving or not moving on weapons. Basic rule is 
aiming down the sights is always more accurate, but not necessarily situationally better than hip firing. Some weapons are made for hip firing, but aiming down the sights, even when moving, is pretty much always more accurate, but hip firing is just often more useful. That is all I'm going to say on how to shoot in Battlefield 1. Please leave me a thumbs up if you like this video, a thumbs down if you must, and some comments. I love to hear your thoughts and ideas for this video, for others, and especially if you make your own videos. Let me know what you think. Cheers, YouTubers. See you next time.